to go. He seems to be higher, but that's the vertical axis is in time. And basically, he says time is an illusion. Yeah. Time is part of the ego system. So, in fact, we are complete equals. So, in Jeanette's case, where her her boss basically ordered her to make a change in her behavior, was in effect really ordering her to make a change in her mind. And when Jeanette affected a change in behavior, perhaps it's simply that that part of the mind of her Jeanette's mind, which was already in there which recognizes love, um, recognized the change of behavior as representing that thing that was already in her mind, and so she just started listening to something else in her mind, which was already in there. What was already in my mind kicked in, and, and you know, mm -hmm. I understood the, what was happening. I think there's a good section, too, in the, in the teacher's manual that talks about our changes required in the teachers of God's situation. In other words, and basically, the first sentence of it is, changes are required in the minds <laughs> of the teachers of God. And basically, he says, in some cases, there will be a change in external circumstances. But to bring it back to the example, in the sense that there's, remember how we talked about the mind as being this very deep thing. I don't know if you were here at the beginning, but we described it as this, almost like a skyscraper with a decision maker at the, at the basement who's choosing between the ego and the Holy Spirit every instant. And basically, when, when one has willingness for a shift of mind, it may seem to be that the externals are actually being the impetus or that are, are pushing us. For other words, in other words, sometimes people have an experience of feeling like, like they don't belong in a particular job, but they, they feel too afraid to leave. And they feel too afraid to leave, but they really feel like they need to be to something else, but they're too afraid to leave, and it kind of goes on and on and on until finally they get fired. You know, someone could say, well, that that getting fired from that job was the impetus you need to go on to that new job or that new whatever you need. When actually the Course once again brings it back to the mind, that the, it it's all has to do with our mind's willingness to open up to the Holy Spirit. And it certainly seems a lot of times as if there is an external impetus, like a, a spouse leaving or a big change of jobs or one of those things, which seems like a major shift on the outside, but really that's just an interpretation that really, it's all, it always comes back to our own mind's decision, that our minds make the decision at a very deep level of mind, and then whatever is outpictured in terms of even a, a boss coming to you and, and asking you to do something can seem to be the thing that really triggered it. But it brings it back to our own responsibility again. Question. Do you find that people who want to take full responsibility and yet still believe in the illusion start feeling more and more guilty? because they know they are responsible? Yeah, I think that that's a, a big, it's that level of confusion again. I think the biggest, the biggest case of that that I find as I travel around is with sickness. I mean, here you are, now you're studying a, a tool that's starting to say everything's a decision in your mind. There's no external God that's punishing you and zapping you with AIDS and cancer and, you know, punishing you. And there, you start to see more and more that, that the, the medical model, in other words, that you catch germs and all these things that, I mean, I grew up believing all that stuff. <laughs> That's what I, my mom taught me, you know. Sanitation is important because you catch germs and so on and so forth. Or sun rays, you know, that you got to put the sunscreen on because sun can cause cancer. Well, here comes Jesus and basically is saying, everything's a decision in your own mind, that there's nothing outside in the world that's, that's bringing about any of this. That's a big turnaround. So if, if everything's a decision and I I'm, and I'm, have the ability to make those decisions, then when sickness comes up, when people start getting symptoms, whether it's cancer or even colds and flus, then the ego is very happy to see the mind go through a guilt trip. You know, Because the mind's thinking, well, if I make decisions and I'm, my mind is causative and I'm sick, oh my gosh, I'm making myself sick. And then it can be like a loop you know, where it's like, oh my gosh. But really what it is, is it's a level confusion again, because it's still a misidentification. That the I, I'm making myself sick. I'm making my self, my body, my teeny self. It's still a belief that the mind thinks that it's a little person. And, and that's the thing that, that's where the mistake's coming in. In other words, the Course is teaching us that we are infinite, that we are magnitude, that we are spirit that we are abstract light. You know, sometimes you might have heard of near-death experiences where people talk about this brilliant white light of unconditional love. 
in a sense, the Course is saying that's what your true identity is. The Christ is a spirit created in the image of the Father. The Father's spirit, the Son's spirit. The Father's infinite, the Son's infinite. But with sickness or something like that, the tendency is, oh my gosh, if I'm responsible, I take that principle, and oh my gosh, look at this body, look what I'm doing. You take that principle and you put those two together, self-responsibility and look what I'm doing, sickness, and there's guilt. Really, it just comes down to it's still a misperception of, of who I think I am. You know, that's what it is. Misidentification is what it really comes down to. I think I've shared, I've had mind shifts and miracles where I've, I've, there's just been such an instantaneous shift in my mind that symptoms have left my body in an instant. And, you know, those are very powerful kind of personal witnesses for me that this is, he's not fooling in here. <laughs> yeah. that I used the example with the flu where, you know, the thoughts were, oh, this will take 24 hours or 48 hours to get over this bug and da da da. And then having such a powerful shift that, that all the symptoms, the nausea, the diarrhea, and everything, just in an instant. It really shows the power of the mind. Also, what the Course calls magic is the medical model. Operations, pills, you know, all those extraneous things that we think are necessary for good health. Instead of watching our thoughts and, and letting go of the ego thought system, of course, in the ego system, the, lots of external things, the Course calls magic. But the Course is not anti-magic. You know, it's not like um, that pills are bad and that surgery is bad and that all these things. But basically, the Course says that if you're too frightened to open up to the Holy Spirit, you know, and have a, a complete a mind shift or a miracle, then perhaps you need a mix of magic and miracle. In other words, Jesus isn't saying that you you should just stay there as your head is throbbing, you know, and, or as something's happening, you know, and and you have the Tylenol or whatever, you know, that you you feel like we could really do the job, but you're just going to stay there and, and work this through because, you know, it can be, the mind can be in such a fearful state that it, it's too closed down to the Holy Spirit. And so Jesus, once again, is not anti-magic. He just says, have a little mix, a mix of the magic and miracle. You'll go along, you'll keep getting better, your mind will get more highly trained, and there will come a time when you can have the mind, you'll be open to the mind shift, and you'll you know, in a sense, the, the symptoms, the pain or how, whatever will disappear. But that's, that's where the mind training comes in.